Okay, now that we have finished and wrapped up module one and everyone is confident that they can navigate the course, it's time to get started with our real coursework. So module one is just an intro. We wanna make sure everyone feels comfortable navigating the course. When you get to module two, the format of the modules will all look the same. So there'll be an intro paragraph that talks about kind of the overarching goals, everything you're gonna cover in the module. And then as you scroll down, you'll see a section for lesson one, lesson two. Module two is lessons one through five and then at the bottom of every module will be a module exam and if there's a project or there's some other activity it'll also be posted at the bottom of the module every lesson is kind of a wash rinse and repeat for the format it will include learning objectives that are specific to that lesson and if you go and look at your syllabus and you look at the module level learning objectives you'll see that these are the same exact objectives we have listed as the module they're just broken down by lesson. So all of the lesson one, lesson two, lesson three, et cetera, uh, objectives, they've just been listed as one big list under the module. What I would like you to do is to get into the habit of reading through these objectives before you start the lesson, and then coming back and rereading through them once you finish the lesson. To complete a lesson, you will participate in the lecture. You will then complete a skills practice and a knowledge test. So let's talk about what each one of those means. The lecture will include a slideshow and a recorded lecture. The slideshow is essentially our version of an OER textbook. We have formatted this, we've written it in paragraph form. It's not really a slideshow that you would lecture from, it's more of a, it's your textbook that you should read through. And so you can either read through the slideshow or you can watch the videos, or you can do both. Um, it's up to you. When you're taking your knowledge test or your quiz at the end of the lesson, I would recommend making sure that you have the slideshow open um, because there's a lot of information that you can get directly from the slideshow that will help you answer the questions. After you participate in the slideshow lecture, whether you read the slideshow, you watch the videos, or you do both, you will complete a skills practice and a knowledge test. The skills practice is meant to be a low pressure environment for you to practice whatever skills are learned in that particular lesson. So for lesson one, you are learning basically how to open Photoshop and to change color modes. And so for the skills practice, you will be asked to launch Photoshop, take a screenshot, you'll download an image and you'll open it in Photoshop, you'll use a different image and you'll change the the color mode from whatever color it is to grayscale and then to duotone. You will set your Photoshop color settings to North America Prepress 2, etc. You will be asked to do certain things. These are things that should be relatively straightforward after watching the lecture. However, uh, we have also included demo videos which will help you with some aspects of the requirements. The demo videos will not be a walk step-by-step walkthrough that will help you do items one through four as highlighted. Uh, they are just to clarify certain things. You don't even need to watch the demo videos if you watched the lecture and thoroughly took notes and practiced along with the lecture. These demos should be as a backup, not as a replacement to the lecture. Because when you get to your knowledge test, which is your, your activity at the end of the lesson, you won't be able to answer all the questions on the knowledge test if you only watched these demo videos. The last step in every single skills practice is an option to post any questions that you have about the lesson. Uh, as your instructor, I am going to be monitoring all of the active discussion. So let's go back to the schedule and let's choose a random week in the semester. So during this week in the semester, we are working on refocusing images, fun with layers, and using filters. During that week, I'm going to be constantly monitoring these three discussions because they are the active discussions, and I'll grade your work as soon as I see it, and I will also answer any questions as soon as I see it. If you are running behind schedule and you are working on the history panel, well, that's a bad example because there's no skills practice, using color lesson, when we are all working on the refocusing images, I might not see that you've posted a question, but when I do grading at the end of the week, I will see it and I will respond to it, but you will not get as quick or a timely response if you're working behind. Um, whatever lesson is currently active is the one that's going to get the most attention from me or whoever your teacher is. The skills practices are meant to be low pressure. They're meant for you to explore. So if there's other things that were covered in the lesson and you wanted to practice them, 
post what you're working on too. Share it with the class. Anything that you post in these discussions, the entire class will see. And to wrap up every lesson, there will be a knowledge test. There is no time limit on your knowledge test. So what I would recommend is I would launch the knowledge test at the same time that I'm doing the lecture or I'm participating in the lecture. The questions in the knowledge test should appear in the same order that you see them in the lesson. We did that on purpose. These are not, the skills practices and the knowledge test, they're not meant to be hard. They're not meant to be a make or break part of your grade. You're meant to get 100% on every single one. And so as you find the answers, as you are participating in the lecture, you can mark them as the correct answer and then hit submit when you're done. The reason that you get two attempts on every knowledge test is so that if you don't get all the questions right, you can go back and you can focus on the ones that you got wrong and then you can review that content and submit again. I would highly encourage everyone not to make their second attempt until after they contact their teacher for help. I can't speak for all instructors, but I host online office hours and if you come to me and you say, I'm having a problem with question seven on lesson one. I can go to question seven, I can read through the question, and I'm not going to give you the answer, but I will help you find the answer or I will help clarify anything that you have questions on so that you can resubmit the knowledge test and get 100%. There is no reason why any student should not be able to get 100% on every knowledge test and every skills practice because you can fix and resubmit your skills practices and if you come and chat with me before you make your second attempt, I will help you find the correct answer on your knowledge tests. Let's close out of some of these windows here. Oh no, I exited the class. Okay, to wrap up these demo videos, at the end of every module, there will be a module exam and or creative projects. I'm going to click on a different module because module two doesn't have a project. So at the bottom of module four, after you've completed all of your lessons, there's a creative project and an exam. The creative projects are meant for you to flex your skills. The requirements require skill sets to be applied properly, but also it is expected that you will work hard and you will make a, a beautiful creative design. Uh, for that reason, you should not wait until the end of the module to start the project. They should be worked on for the entire duration of the project. So the second that you start module four and you start lesson 11, you should jump down to the bottom of the page and read the requirements so that you know what you're working on for the creative project. And last but not least, module exams are timed. You only get 75 minutes. Questions include multiple choice questions, you can see here. You'll have some that are short answer and some that are fill in the blank. And at the very bottom, there are always um, hands-on Photoshop assignments that you need to work on. So you need to make sure that Photoshop is open before you get started on the activity. I would even probably scroll down and do those questions first just so you know how long they're taking and then go back and answer all the other questions on the exam. The first exam for module two, so there's no exam in module one, the first exam for module two has the same 75 minute time limit, 75 minutes, but you don't need 75 minutes, it's maybe a 25, 30 minute exam at most. The reason that you have 75 minutes is that so that you can use module two as your example to get used to the format of the course, um, sorry, of the format of the exams. So when you get to module three exam and you have a tighter time limit, you're not wasting time downloading Photoshop, understanding how to respond to questions in the right way or upload images and that kind of thing. Okay, I think that wraps up all you need to know to get started in the course. Please complete everything in module one if you have not already done so before the date that's posted on the course syllabus. I highly recommend printing that course, um, the course calendar so that you know when things are due. And then when you're done, go ahead and move on to Module 2. It can never hurt to get a head start. Um, you, do, you just don't want to fall behind in this class because there's so much work that's due every Wednesday and every Saturday throughout the semester.